The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the October 27th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, I don't know. I just uh, got totally sidetracked there. Sorry about that. So, uh, in any event, uh, I would love to hear from you. So let's do it like this. You can give us a call at eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you uh, can't call in, you can always reach me by sending me an email. You can send it to steve at tfn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And in our tiger's den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Less Show. A bit of a mixed bag out here. The Dow's off 98. The S&P's up 3. The Nasdaq's up 144. The Russell's off 25. That's a big leader to the downside. Semi's off five points. That's uh, pretty much flat out here. Trainers are off 94. Let's do this. We didn't get a chance to do our uh, market update at 1 o'clock. Let's just go take a look at our market update charts out here. Just give you a quick overview of what's going on. So you've got the ES mini. You can see the A to B equals CD. Uh, bar number nine formed yesterday in the TD9 count. Yes, it was a shooting star. That confirms they sell the D points. So you got two sell patterns inside of the S&P 500. If we take a look at spot volatility, it's still below its 50-day exponential moving average, which is bullish for the S&P 500. However, and we'll do this quick. We'll do this, however, by going to this page. Here, what we can see is we've begun a rising VIX pattern. So we're looking at the very bottom panel of the chart here. This is on a closing basis. And I've got other instances when we have that rising. This is when the spot volatility is below the 50-day exponential moving average. So we've got a rising closing spot volatility index in the face of rising S&P 500. That typically leads to some type of a top. So we've got the topping signals that are in. So that would suggest there's two options here to short the S&P 500 or perhaps to go along the volatility index for a very short period of time. But back to our market update charts out here. If we take a look at the NQ. The NQ also formed the same two patterns yesterday that the ES Mini did, a TD9 count top and a sell the D point because it had a bearish shooting star candle. Now, Price is trying to tag yesterday's high. Yesterday's high is up at the 15,543 level. Today we're at 15,532. Now, what happens if price closes above that? Closes above yesterday's high. Well, the TD9 count pattern will still be in play here because this will be the bar following bar number nine. But whatever the high is, yesterday or today, if there's a close above it tomorrow, you can forget about that pattern. And in fact, what that would be signaling to us is a strong momentum move to the upside. So, here, let's just take a look at the equity futures. We can look at the other ones, as the other instruments as well. But in the ES, in the NQ, if we take a look at the NQ, well, let's, go, let's do this here. Because what we're also dealing with is this favorable seasonal cycle, where right now we have two of four instruments that have broken out above their consolidation patterns. Those are the white rectangle levels. We now have, yesterday was a test of the top of that consolidation inside the NQ. Today, obviously, another one. So in theory, we should see the NQ fail here. We should see the Dow get back inside its consolidation. The same thing for the ES Mini. Now, that's in theory. In practice, we need to see what happens before we can draw any conclusions. At this stage, the pullback inside the Dow, uh, perhaps just a, a test of that consolidation breakout pattern. The ES has not begun that move down there. And what happens if the NQ just simply negates the sell signals, the one from yesterday, perhaps one from today as well, tomorrow? That's going to suggest a strong momentum move to the upside. That says 16,928 would be its target. 
And then that brings into play the Dow, which is going to target the 37,400 area, the ES Mini, 4816. That's only if we get a breakout here. We don't have that. Uh, we don't have that confirmation really just yet out here because of the topping signals that we have in play. So back to our market update uh, charts out there. If we go take a, but but everything appears to be signaling that uh, we should see some kind of top, that rising spot volatility index in a rising S&P 500. We take a look at the U.S. dollar index. It's not doing much. It's just trading sideways above the top of its daily profile. It is a valid topping signal in there. That happened a couple of weeks ago. But with price above the top of its profile, its, new, its signal is more neutral than it is anything else out here. Inside of uh, Goldilocks, gold trying to form a new profile today. We won't know until tonight whether it forms or not. But the current support levels where buyers reside is in the 1765 area and at 1804.50 is where the sellers are at silver also attempting to form a new daily profile support here 2378 resistance 2473 now of course on my charts you see for both gold and silver different resistance levels those are different resistance levels those are not the profile areas those resistance levels identify the top of the bearish shooting star candles that form if price closes above that that would be a bullish signal light sweet crude also trying to form a new daily profile again for these we won't have confirmation until this evening although i would say the one in light sweet crude probably more solid than the other two but really won't know until the end of the day but what this does tell us i can share with you and we can go take a look at this later right now we've got light sweet crude trading below its oscillator and change line we haven't seen that for quite a period of time a close below that level by the way that level is 8404 we're trading right now at 8280 um, that's going to then at least signal a move back to the uh, 8124 area there's another level we'll take a look at that we'll get to those charts here momentarily if we take a look at if we take a look at natural gas out here natural gas it's got a uh, sell pattern that formed all the way back here on the trading deck. I think it was a road momentum indicator top October 6. But again, price is above. Now this is day number three above the top of its daily profile. So its signal is neutral to bullish. It's certainly not bearish out here with price being above a resistance level. 30-year treasury, you've got the consolidation patterns going on. Price testing the top of the uh, bearish structured uh, profile. So it looks like the 30-year treasury is likely going to turn down from here. Now, with regard to light sweep crew, let's just go back to that. Let's try to finish that off here. Give me a moment to get back to the chart that we want to or that I want to share with you. So one of the things I like to do, because we're, we're trying to answer the question, what is there really going to be a change in trend if there is, or what would identify a change in trend just versus some kind of normal pullback? So what I look for is I look for key levels of support to be broken and also key level or really key levels of support that have held on a large on a large move higher well turns out that it's the four hour time frame chart for light speed crude that is providing the best signals what do you mean the best signals those red horizontal lines represent td9 breakout areas and so in a bullish market price is going to pull back test those levels and reject it we can see that that has occurred we've seen a couple different tests uh, let me get my cursor out here give me a moment and uh, we saw a test like that back in the September 29th time frame, September 30th time frame, uh, back again here in October 19th, October 20th, October 21st out there. So where I really think Lights Recruit is headed to is 8108. If it could hold that level, that's the buy point. If it closes below that, we likely have some kind of change in trend inside of Light Sweet Crude. We'll be right back. Thanks. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educate investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We got the Dow off 80. S&P's up five now. NASDAQ is up 146. So a uh, little chatter in the den about uh, cap-weighted uh, indices out here. So let's spend a little time with one of those important cap-weighted indices. That's the NDX 100. Here are the eight charts that represent, uh, I believe, just over 50% of the NDX 100. Apple, the number one waiting in the upper left-hand corner. Do we see any kind of topping signal inside of Apple? And the answer here is no. The only thing that we see inside of Apple is an oscillator and change line that uh, changed colors about three or four bars ago. And so the anticipation is that we should see price and that line catch up to each other over the coming sessions. A test and rejection of that line would be bullish, and that would signal a move in the case of Apple up to 155.48. Right now, Apple just trading with inside its daily profile, so the resistance level about 158.18. But if you're asking me, does Apple show the, any kind of a topping pattern out here? The answer is absolutely not. Absolutely not. And it suggests that Apple's going to head up to 155.48. Inside the den, I don't know when, to, and, I, and I'm not going to change over to charts or anything to figure out when Apple releases earnings. But is it tomorrow when Apple is coming out with uh, their earnings out there? Oh, by the way, I asked a question inside the Tiger's Den. I don't know if anybody caught the game last night, which, which went on until midnight. I know because I stayed up and, and watched it. My favorite play of the game last night. And, and I have to admit, the opening up with a home run, uh, the first batter, that was pretty cool. You have to admit that. They were like, okay, uh, these batters. And, uh, I mean, they, uh, the uh, the Braves have got some uh, – both teams have got really great hitters. But, man, the Braves are just dialed in at this stage, or it seems to be. But but my favorite play of the game last night was in the, was in the bottom of the ninth. And it was the uh, first batter that was up who just uh, – and I, who was it? Diaz, I believe, might have been uh, let off the uh, ninth inning out there. And, I mean, he torched one to left field. I mean, a line drive shot. And it just went foul. Why was that my favorite play? Because it was snagged by a guy, a man, our age, let's say, who brought his mitt to the game. You know, I always go to the game and I always watch those people who bring all those mitts. And I'm always saying to myself, not a chance. You're not going to catch a ball. And that was the first time that I can recall, uh, not that I've seen a lot of them, where, I mean, a line drive shot like that, boom, right into that guy's mitt. That was my favorite play of the game. But I know you don't, you're not interested in that. You're more interested in moving over to Microsoft. Well, if we take a look at Microsoft, okay, the number two waiting inside the NDX 100, it negated its topping signal 
I, uh, a couple of days ago. And price right now is trading above the top of its daily profile out there. So Microsoft is not giving us an indication of a top here. So the top two weighted instruments are saying, eh, I'm not going lower. At least that's what the charts are signaling to us. If you take a look at Amazon out here, Amazon creates a sell the D point. Price gets down, closes below the bottom of its daily profile, but yesterday it shot right back above it, and now it's trading into the resistance area, which is between 34.17 and 34.62. Looks like it's going to go after 34.62, and if it closes above that, it's going higher. We take a look at Tesla, which has been on a tear. There's no signal here that Tesla is done tearing it up to the upside. No topping pattern that is in place when we take a look at Tesla. Google, okay, so now we're down to number five out here. Google has got a gigantic wide-ranging bar today. So it, too, had a sell the D-point pattern. Let's just expand out the chart for Google here. Take a moment. It had a sell the D-point pattern. Took price right back to support. Support being the top of its daily profile. That level held. And now we've got a new A to B equals CD pattern that is forming out here. So let's go ahead and draw that in. Let's do this. Um, so the A to B point, we just have to stretch this, is going to be just like that. And now on the C to D level, I'm just simply going to uh, copy this, paste it, slide it over. Whoops, try to slide it over. I really should just go ahead and get that to A to B equals C D tool developed for Ninja Trader 8. So here's the one to one level, uh, which is not too far away. It's in the 3000 uh, zone, we're 2971. But chances are that this is way more than a one to one A to B equals C D to the upside. I say chances are. And if price does close above its all time high, which was a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, it's shooting star, that's at 2936 or 2970. It'll have taken out resistance and suggest that it wants to continue to move higher. So now we've got five instruments, the top five weightings inside of the NDX 100, as far as I can tell, are all signaling to you and I that they want higher price. Yes, Apple should go down, test that green oscillator and change line, you know, or just move sideways. But that's not a bearish pattern or signal. Now, NVIDIA out here, NVIDIA has uh, is going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count, needs to form bar number nine tomorrow. The high could come on today, tomorrow or the next day. That would take us into Friday out here. But at this stage, is there a topping signal? Sure, potential topping signal. We need to wait for tomorrow to play out. Facebook, uh, it's tried to form a Rhodes Mintum Indicator. It actually did form one. It did what it was supposed to do. It formed that one right back here in wave number seven. That's letter G. Price gets right up to the resistance level, the top of that daily profile. And it's trading, as you know, below the bottom of its bullish structure profile. Still with the Rhodes Mintum Indicator signal, but no bullish reversal candle. So in the case of Facebook, yeah, it looks like Facebook wants to head lower. PayPal doesn't have a bottoming signal, so it says it wants to head lower. So only two of the, really, I show uh, eight instruments here, but it's really nine, right? Because you've got uh, Facebook's got, or Google's got two different chairs out there, um, uh, traded chairs. So that's what's going on inside the NDX 100. And so if we're looking for any kind of significant top, what we really need to do is we really need to see these core weightings here generate that signal. And they're just not there. At least not yet. So let's take a look at that cap weight. We can do the same thing for the Dow, the Dow which is responding a bit poorly today. Let's, in fact, do that. Let's go ahead and throw up the same, well, not the same charts, but the top eight charts here that also represent more than 50% of the uh, weighting inside of it. we got United Health number one. That's going to form a TD9 count top. Well, it did it yesterday. Today's high is the higher high. If United Health closes above today's high, whatever that is, man, that tells you about a strong momentum move to the upside. So does it have a topping pattern or signal? It does. Goldman Sachs also. Yesterday was bar number eight. You can see how price got up to its 89 breakdown level. That's at the 417.58 area. Looks like price will close above bar number five. This is suggesting Goldman Sachs should pull back and test its oscillator and change line. It's not that much further below 407.90. If price closes below that, you can see a run back to 393.55. If we take a look at Home Depot, and I'm sure there's an A to B equals CD pattern out here. And yesterday was a dark cloud cover candle. But today, price is trading above it. So Home Depot is saying, yeah, that was just a fake out. Now, of course, I don't know where price is going to close. If price closes below yesterday's high, then that sell the D point pattern is still in play. place. If it doesn't, it gets negated. You get to bar number seven. And maybe there's a top that forms an Home Depot tomorrow through Monday. Microsoft, it's on a tear. I don't have any kind of a topping signal out here for it. If we take a look at Salesforce Innovation, it just has a triggered Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. But yesterday was a close above its TD9 count. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. But today's close, if today closed above 295.53, uh, that will be bullish for its signal. McDonald's here, 
Um, I don't really have a pattern. Well, I do. There's an A to B equals CD that completed, and that's completing with today's move higher. That's that gap to the upside out here. So McDonald's is saying it wants to move higher. It's back inside. Now, the way that it'll communicate that it really wants to move higher is price has got to close above the center of that bullish structured profile. So 243.16 is the number where price needs to close above. If it does, then that signaling McDonald's wants to head back to 249.95. Visa out here is retesting a prior swing point. I don't know in this software if it's doing it with lighter volume or not. If it is doing it with lighter volume, well, then that's more of a bottom than it is anything else. In the case of Honeywell out here, um, I don't have a good read per se, but if price can get back above the bottom of its daily profile, it's about another 30 cents from where it's trading right now, that would be a bullish outcome. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. Uh, we've got a couple questions that have come in by email. Let's get to those. The first one coming from Hector and Patty. They are the fuel injectors. Uh, Hector writes, Steve, oh, happy winning Wednesday. Back at you, my friend. QQQ are currently blasting away the B point of a daily and weekly massive upward move. Please confirm weekly, daily. Um, so we'll take a look at that. First thing, though, first things first, Hector. Um, I've got the NASDAQ 100. And you're asking about the Qs, so really the same thing here. I've got the NASDAQ 100 monthly horizontal trading range boundary lines up on our screen here. So 
in order for the Qs to blast away next, they're going to need, or the NDX 100, is going to need to close above 15,887. So remember, we're in this consolidation zone. We're trying to determine, are we going to remain in this consolidation? Are we going to break out? Uh, because that will change, obviously, our outlook on how we would trade and so forth. Um, and so the key level to be watching, thereabouts, don't use it right to the T, is about 15,887. If we see a close above that, uh, then we're into our next level of horizontal trading range levels would take us to 17,480 for the NDX 100. So I just wanted to point that out to you. Let me just close this chart out here and uh, get that off my screen. There's a lot of calculations going on there, and that's the reason why I wanted to get rid of that. Um, it just hogs, hogs the system. And I've got plenty of things that are open, so I've got a lot of hogs out here. But back to your specific question now about the QQQs, and that's what we've got up on our screen right now. So if we take a look at the QQQs, the last time that price was up here, that would take us back to September 7th. There was 23 million shares on that day. So Hector's already onto something. The Qs are attacking that swing point, as he said, with massive volume. Yes, or you said massive upward move. We're going to interpret that to mean massive volume. So if price takes that level out, uh, that would be very bullish. Now, on a weekly basis, that swing point, I believe, has volume of 126 million. It's only, we're not even, well, we're about halfway into the week. We're at 102 million. 102 versus 126. So if that's a signal and we're thinking that there's a top out here, and a lot of times people will base that on volume, well, Hector, good point. We're not seeing that inside the NDX 100 or the QQQ series ETF. And that says, hey, I'm out of here. I'm gone. Now, with regard to A to B equals CD patterns out here, holy shnikes on this one. Um, as I take a look at the daily time frame chart, so on the daily time frame, the only real legitimate A to B equals CD pattern that, that I see would be this one here. And so that's starting with the lows. I'm not saying there's several A to B equals CD patterns, by the way. But here's the most recent one on a daily basis, and it's already been confirmed. And that's with the A point at October 4th, the B point out here on October 7th, and the retracement into October 12th. And so at this stage here, we're above the 1.618 area. That says we should see the Qs move up and target 387.22. So that's the A to B equal that I see there. Again, that's the most recent one. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. Now, on the weekly chart, the question becomes, what do we use for our A point out here? Uh, or how about if we just do this? Because the larger, the larger A to B equals CD pattern, this one is very clear to everybody, or should be very clear to everybody, starts back at the March 2020 lows. So let's start with that as the A point. Let's get that tool going here. So that, that's very clear to everybody. That's at March 23rd low. Our B point is going to be the high that formed on August 31st, the week of. And the C point is going to be the retracement down in support. That was that bullish structured weekly profile. So you can the A to B equals CD, very easy to see. So now, Hector, when we take a look at the weekly time frame, let me just scrunch this so we can see the, both the daily and the weekly. So scrunch is a, a technical term out here that Stevie just created. Uh, but what we want to see is where do these A to B equals CD patterns line up? So the 1 to 1.272, and as long as price remains above 381.35, that's what the daily would suggest. So you got 387 and you got 398 on the weekly chart. So I think those are really the A to B equals CD patterns. Now, what I believe Hector is also looking at, and, and not that this is inaccurate or anything, but first we want to make sure that we got the larger pattern in play out here as we take a look at it. And then you can build from there. So you can see, I'm going to go ahead and draw that back in. We can draw multiple A to B equals CD patterns out here. So this is the weekly chart. So I'm just getting that first one that we looked at. And now what Hector's probably looking at, he could be looking at the C point that we used out here on September 21st. That would be a natural thing to do as the A point of another A to B equals CD. So if we do that, and that's what we're going to do right now, may get a little cluttered out here, but we can handle clutter. So we got our A point, our B point by out here is October 15th, and the C point is March the 1st. Now, I want to do this because I believe Hector is trying to master the A to B equals CD pattern. So here, you've got a one-to-one -one that takes us up into the 396 level. Um, so... The, well, well, the one, I'm sorry, the one one took us to 375. The one one point two seven two takes us into the 398 area. So we got a cluster, if you will, going on there. With regard to then the next one that we could draw out here that you would try to do, uh, my guess is I would start with that C point again. But what I'd be using is, is and we already know that the, we've got volume. So the question is whether or not the Qs can close above that high. I think we did the work 
in looking at the detail of the cap-weighted stocks out there. And I think we came away with the conclusion that it's not unreasonable to think that the Qs aren't going to go ahead and continue to move higher. So if we take a look at this next one that you're looking at, Hector, that gets us out into about the 435 level. I know it gets confusing. Let me go ahead and start deleting. We'll delete the main one, the first one. We'll delete the second one. And here's that third one out there. But the point is, Hector, is that let's just not just focus on just one or the most recent on a weekly basis. Step back a little bit further in time to create those A to B equals CD patterns out here. But yes, it does look like the Qs are getting ready and they're signaling to us that they want to move higher out there. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing. Let me just make sure that I answered your question. I, I believe that I did. And if not, though, I know that you'll be kind enough to write back to me, and I'll make sure that I answer that next question. Uh, the, our, our, speaking of our next question, our next question coming in here from Nick. And as we take a look at Nick, he says, hey, Steve, long time without a question. Oh, no problem. But I continue to watch your shows almost daily. Thank you very much for doing that. Would you take a look at UNG? We can. We'll put UNG. Of course, you know out here, Nick, that we're going to have to take a look at the natural gas contract. But still, let's just take a look at the ETF. Try to answer your question out there. Would you take a look at UNG? Do you think it's around an entry point now? Hmm, no oh boy. Or is it going to pull back more? So I think that it's going higher, but the entry point would have been more than would have been well before today. That's the only problem. So uh, I wish you the best too. So thanks so much for for writing in. So with regard to UNG, Nick, if we were only going to use the UNG, not take a look at the natural gas contract, if I were to suggest to you that now is an entry point, I would be telling you to buy resistance. And CB is not going to do that. Right. And so resistance here on the UNG, the top of its daily profile price is printing at 2064 and the top of that profile is 2065. Even if price can get above this level here, the next resistance area is the top of its weekly profile, which is 2124. So is this a um, is this a buy point? The answer is is, is clearly no. Uh, it's we're not going to have you buy resistance. That would be buying a breakout. But now it's got to really break out and really has to break out above its its uh, its most recent high, in order to to generate that kind of breakout message. But let's do this here. Uh, if you bear with me, I don't know if I've got the, oh man, I don't. That's okay. I've got a game plan B. Game plan B is natural gas, December 21st. I'll get those charts fired up on my other, on my white background charts. But in the meantime, while those are getting ready, let's just take a look at, whoops, I think Stevie's gone too far. Where's natural gas? Should be right here. Copper, 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 natural gas, natural gas. Okay. So as we take a look at natural gas here, we're in the, uh, December contract, yeah, it, it looks bullish because it is above the top of that daily profile. Let's do this, Nick. Let's go take a look at Stevie's white background charts. Try to answer your question. Well, we've answered your question. Now is not the time to take a long in natural gas, but let's go look at the natural gas charts. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at tfnn.com for only $37.50.
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We still got the December contract for natural gas up on our screen. During that break, I looked at my white background chart to see if there was anything of significance there to share with you, and there wasn't. So we're not going to waste your time uh, going through that. Instead, I'll just simply come back here, Nick, and point out the patterns inside the natural gas contract. So the pattern here up at the top, uh, when it made that high, was a nice road momentum indicator signal. When that happens, typically we see price get back to support. In this case here, it came all the way back to its support level, and it did that on October 19th. That was the bottom of its daily profile. Didn't get all the way down there. It got very close. The low was 507. The bottom of the profile was 503. But it was on the very, or two days later, uh, when a new profile formed, and I'd mentioned this inside the Tiger, I'd mentioned this during the show, and got a couple questions, I think, inside the Tiger's Den about why I said, uh, all of a sudden that uh, natural gas had become bullish. And it was not because there was a completed pattern, Nick. So I did not have a completed pattern to the downside. What we did have, though, and this is pattern information, was we had a new profile form above the prior profile, meaning we had a higher low and a higher high. And that's a bullish signal out there. And it was a bullish, it was bullish in structure. And so my contention at that stage, I don't think we, I don't recall whether we had the descending trend line or not. But as soon as price closed above 548, we would see a move to the top. Well, that all happened in one day. That was three days ago, two days ago. Um, but price now above the top of the profile. If your question was, is natural gas going higher? Uh, the, the signals are yes. Uh, but as far as an entry point, it really would have been, you know, a handful of days ago when we were talking about that this new profile generated a bullish message. And so I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for listening. And I look forward to uh, speaking to you or get an email from you again. So no other questions that are inside by email, but we do have one inside the Tiger's Den. It's from John. And John wants to take a look at the 30-year Treasury. And so let me get those charts up on our screen here first. Let's use this set. Here's our four panel. 30-year uh, 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 treasury uh, charts using my Stevie synthetic contract, synthetic symbol. That way we have historical data. We have profiles that are meaningful to you and I. And this question is on bond futures, where does resistance uh, set up? Well, we're really trading right into it right now, John. We're slightly above it. I'm referring to the daily resistance, that is. And that's its daily bearish structured daily profile. And the top is 160.20. We're at 160.27. I've also got these consolidation patterns that are drawn in here. So we've got another area of resistance just above this level. But if price can close above the top of the, cons the, the, top of the current consolidation, I would say that price is about equivalent to 160.31. So just a few ticks higher from where we're trading right now. But if price can do that, and certainly on a weekly basis, John, if price can close above the bottom of its weekly profile, 160.13, then that that generates a message that price should make its way to 162, maybe 164, what's a 163 and 27, 30 seconds. The monthly chart is supportive of that idea. Again, the idea that uh, price closed above the top of its daily profile, as you say, for two consecutive sessions. 
at least closes below above the bottom of the weekly profile, then that signals move higher and that 162.04, 163.27 would really be the target areas. I don't know if there's anything else, but let's just see on the daily and weekly chart that stick up uh, stick out on our black background, our white background chart. So let me uh, slide this over just a tad, get our current data. Let's populate this thing. And uh, well, I don't have anything else on this set of charts to suggest that's not the likely outcome of a, a move higher. And this would say, I'm sure your eyes point, you know, went right to it, that price would likely go back and target the highs from September 23rd, big old bearish engulfing candle, and that's in the 164.15 area. That's what the daily time frame shows us. How about the weekly chart? You know, I just don't have enough data here because I'm using the December contract, but there's nothing here that changes our outcome or what we looked at. The 30-minute chart, so this will be helpful to you and everybody else. TD9 count pattern forms about an hour ago. It'll bear a shooting star. I'm sure there's an A to B equals CD. So much like the NQ and the ES and the uh, Dow equity future contract, there's, you know, multiple topping signals here. However, in order for those topping signals to gain any kind of downside traction, where's price going to need to close below? You've got it the uh, oscillator and change line. So that may just be where price pulls back to, but if price did close below that, that kind of uh, maybe we stub our toe a little bit in the idea of moving higher. Uh, so I would just anticipate maybe a sideways, a slight move higher, but if price takes out today's high out here on a closing basis on a 30 minute time frame, that says that what we just looked at on the uh, weekly chart, on the daily chart, suggesting higher price, that that is more likely than not what will come to fruition. So hope that helps you out with regard to the 30-year Treasury. Uh, if you've got any other questions, just go ahead and type them in on the den. In the meantime, Mimi writes in, and Mimi says, please comment on MS. Okay, so let's go figure out what Morgan Stanley is doing out here. Let's get this typed in on our black background charts. Let's get that going on the uh, on, uh, on my white background charts. And your question is, please comment on it. So. In the case of Morgan Stanley, what I see more than anything else is the resistance level up at 105.81. Uh, is there an indication that price wants to get up to that area? Yeah, maybe. But it's inside its bearish structured area, so it doesn't have to. But the bearish structured level for Morgan Stanley is between 102.16 and 105.81 out here. Um, let's pull over my white background chart, see if there's some other signal information so that we can help Mimi. Well, when we take a look at the daily time frame, we do see that the oscillator and change line change colors probably back on the trading day, I say probably on October 19th. And what transpired the next day and the day after that, and even the day after that, were tests and rejections of that green oscillator and change line. So, Mimi, that suggests that price wants to move higher. That would say go and tackle the top of that weekly profile. As I take a look at the weekly time frame, that top of that level, that bearish structure, also had confirmed a road's momentum indicator signal. So, um, and you're into resistance, but the daily is suggesting higher price out there. On a monthly basis for Morgan Stanley, Let's see what we have out here. You have a TD9 count top, but uh, price would need to close below 90.19 uh, to suggest any uh, downside action. Now, it says over time price should target that oscillator and change line. Uh, no, I take that back. I take that back. Uh, skip what I just said out there. Don't necessarily have to have that signal. So Morgan Stanley, it's got, it's got, some, it's, it's got some battle areas, right? It's at its highs both profile-wise, pattern-wise out here. And the daily says, hey, I want to make a run for those highs. And Mimi, that's going to be the message as long as price, in this case here, because the oscillator and change line is so close to the top of that daily profile, as long as price remains above 101.10 on a closing basis, Morgan Stanley should make a run for those highs. So thanks so much for writing in. I hope that that helps you out. And as I take a look at all of the requests, we're dead. We're gone. Zippo, nada, zilch. Have no more requests in there, which is not too bad because we're about to come into the uh, last segment of the show in about a minute. So let's take a quick peek out here. Let's see what else uh, do we want to take a look at. Nobody's asked about gold or silver. Uh, let me get a uh, set of charts up here on my screen. Actually, I had a question that came in by email or text earlier. So let's go put that up on the chart here. Let's change screens. Give me a moment. And what we're going to look at is both gold and silver side by side. And if you take a look at gold and silver, you see both of them have oscillator and change lines that change color. And what we're anticipating as a price not line are going to catch up to each other. The question that was posed to me, in essence, was, hey, if gold starts to really trade higher today, is it possible that we've just seen a test of that oscillator and change line? Because if price moves higher, substantially higher, that line will rise. 
my answer was, yeah, if that is in fact what happens. If it doesn't, well, then maybe we just have more sideways action. But what we're looking for in gold is a test, a rejection of Stevie's green line. The same thing in the case of silver. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We're going to go take a look at BKKT. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're looking at rocket ship uh, ticker symbol BKKT. Um, this thing went from about 10 bucks all the way up to 32 or so on uh, one day. That was on October 25th with some massive volume. Now, this, uh, this instrument hasn't really done a whole lot. It's not very liquid out here. I mean, prior to those days, it was doing, you know, 1 million, 2 million shares, something like that. Um, and there's not enough data out here really to provide you with a ton of information, White Shark. Um, what I can share with you is, I mean, so here's the daily time frame. What are we going to try to pull out of this? Not a whole lot. You're looking to short this stock, a $27 stock that just has that big move with that big wide volume bar out there. You, you are a shark out there. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't touch this to the long side or to the short side out here until this thing settled down and we could see some kind of patterns out here. But from the short side, you know, if I look at a 30 minute time frame chart out here, do I have a short signal? I don't, if that's what you're looking for. If I put a 15 minute time frame chart out here, do I have a short signal? I don't. 
Uh, if I look at a 65 minute time frame chart, do I have a short signal? I don't. So I appreciate that you want to go short out here. I don't see the signal. That doesn't mean that it's not getting ready to turn around and head short out here. But why would you trade a 27? Uh, this is just a you know question that I guess I'm speaking to myself. But why would you trade a stock that's at uh, 27 bucks and try to short it? You, you realize your 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 downside potential. This isn't going to zero. Not after that wide ranging bar, you know, with the volume that it had behind that move out here. So your risk is that this thing has another one of those days. And I wouldn't want to be caught in that firestorm. If it can do it once, it can do it again out here. So uh, I would just stay clear of a schizophrenic stock out there. But that's just Stevie talking, and uh, you may decide to do otherwise. I wish I could find you some type of a topping signal, but I can't. So, uh, but anyways, thanks for the question. Folks, stay tuned. We've got two more great hours coming up. Your favorite polar bear, David White, with the Power Trading Hour. He's up next after that. Tom O'Brien, he'll take us on home. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Have a wonderful Wednesday, folks. Thanks for being here. Be safe out there. <laughs>